ISIS has claimed responsibility for the deadliest mass shooting in U.S. history. And it says that the gunman who slaughtered 50 innocent party goers in an Orlando gay club was one of its fighters. Shooter Omar Mateen, 29 year old from Florida, opened fire at the Pulse nightclub in the early hours of Sunday, killing at least 50 people and injuring 53 others. As with the rest of America, I'm shocked about this event. The world is shocked about this event. People are talking about it all over the planet. Uh, President Obama is talking about it. Donald Trump, presidential candidate is talking about it. Uh, Hillary Clinton is talking about it. The news is talking about it. The uh, gay community is talking about it. Law enforcement, everybody. And so White Horse Media is gonna talk about this as well and share some thoughts from the Bible. Personally, I believe that killing is wrong. That what Omar did just a few hours ago was, uh, was a crime. That he, he committed murder. He killed innocent people. But the question comes, how do we know that murder is wrong? How do we know that what he did was wrong? I mean, it seems like an obvious question, but uh, the shooter didn't think it was wrong. ISIS didn't think it was wrong. Radical Islamists don't think it was wrong. And so, you know, how do we know, really, that what he did was wrong? I know our consciences tell us this, but is there any other strong evidence that it was a, it was a crime and that this man did something absolutely terrible? Well, I have here, in front of me, I've got tables of stone, Ten Commandments. This is the first four, written with the finger of God, and here are... The last six, these are abbreviated versions of the Ten Commandments as described in the Bible in Exodus chapter 20. And the Sixth Commandment is right here. It's described in Exodus 20 verse 13, and this is what it says. And the Bible says that God spoke these words. Beginning of Exodus 20, it says that God spoke all these words. And commandment number six, he said, thou shalt not kill or you shall not kill, you shall not murder. We have to have a standard these days to decide what is right and what is wrong. Again, uh, radical Islamists don't think he did anything wrong. We believe, at least uh, I'm assuming that most of us do, that he did something wrong. But how do we know? We have to have a standard. We have to have some basis of right or wrong rather than just the opinions of others, and it seems these days just about everything's up for grabs. Uh, it's just a matter of one opinion versus another. But God has given us a standard. He's given us a standard in the Bible. He's given us a standard in his law and his commandment that he wrote with his own finger on solid stone. You shall not kill. It's there for the world to see. Now, it's not just uh, killing, but in the New Testament, in 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, the Bible tells us that if, if we hate our brother in our heart, then that is considered murder. So murder is wrong according to the Bible. Hatred is wrong. I have no, no difficulty uh, attributing what happened on Sunday morning or Saturday night, two o'clock in the morning at this gay club in Orlando, that this was, uh, this was murder. Uh, this was a terrorist act because uh, Omar was connected, at least sympathetic, toward terrorism, toward radical Muslims. He, he pledged support to ISIS. Uh, and it's also, I would consider it a hate crime because he hated those people. And according to the scriptures, uh, murder is wrong and hatred is wrong. And uh, along with who knows how many other people, I, I certainly want to uh, express uh, sympathy and pain and uh, prayers for the victims uh, in Orlando, and we should still pray for those who are in the hospital because who knows how many more of these will die. Now, why did this man do it? According to his dad, he was interviewed, his father was interviewed within the last 24 hours, and his father said that what, what uh, sparked his son, what really fueled his hostility, was that he was in Florida and he saw two men kissing. And that just set him off. It just, uh, you know, rubbed in the wrong way, and, and that was it, and he, and he went ballistic. Now, you know, we ask the question, well, uh, is murder wrong? Yes, it is. Is hatred wrong? Yes, it is. is. Yes, it is. Well, how about two men kissing? 
Is that wrong? Some say yes, some say no. And this brings up the whole controversy, the LGBT, now Q, controversy. And, and this is, the controversies are aging. Uh, murder is an issue. Hate is an issue. Free speech is an issue. Islamic terrorism is an issue. Islam itself is an issue. What the presidential candidates do with this issue is an issue. And the issues are just raging all around us. The issue of Islam is an issue. And my conviction is that underneath all of these issues is a, is a bigger issue. And the issue is what's right and what's wrong. And how do we know what's wrong? We have the uh, LGBTQ controversy. This is also raging. L stands for lesbian, G for gay, B for bisexual, T for transgender, Q for uh, queer, and the list just goes on and on. I have an article here recently uh, that just came out, and uh, the title is Celebrities Lead the Progressive Generation. It's talking about a lot of the Hollywood stars and how they're coming out and how they're you know, going this direction and that direction. It says many celebrities are gay, lesbian, transgender, gender fluid, gender queer, bisexual, gender neutral, and whoever knows what else. And these days, you know, uh, even the whole, the whole bathroom is, into the, in, is in the controversy. Uh, can a girl or who thinks he's a boy use a boy's bathroom? Can a boy who thinks he's a girl or decides to feel like a girl on a certain day, use the boys' bathroom. Uh, and, you know what's right, what's wrong. Everybody's saying, you know, don't discriminate. Uh, you know, we need to accept everybody, and and I'm the first to say that we need to love everybody because God is a God of love, and we should have compassion. Uh, people are people, no matter what gender they choose to think that they are. Uh, we all are human, and we all deserve compassion, and uh, and kindness, and and a merciful attitude. I believe in that. But still, the question is, what's right in the sight of God? And what is wrong in the sight of God? All of these issues, what happened in Florida, Islam, terrorism, and the gay issue, they're all intertwined in what, uh, what just recently happened. So let me share a few more thoughts. We have the Ten Commandments here. You know, it's amazing. I've recently just really been taking a close look at the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments, while they also uh, specify clearly that murder is wrong. The Ten Commandments are not gender neutral. They're very clear. And let me just quickly walk you through what the Ten Commandments actually say about the issue of men and women, fathers and mothers, daughters, children. Uh, here's commandment number two, the second commandment. God says he is a, a jealous God and he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. So fathers are mentioned in commandment number two. Children are mentioned in commandment number two. Go down to the fourth commandment. It talks about how in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything in it, and he rested on the seventh day. And if you go back to Genesis chapter one, it says that God made man, he made a male, and he made a female. He made Adam and he made Eve. The Bible is very clear on these gender specifics. The fourth commandment goes into gender specifics as well. It talks about how uh, people are to keep the Sabbath, Sabbath and not work on the Sabbath, and it says, neither you nor your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant. So there's males, females, sons, daughters. We go down to commandment number five, and it says, honor your father and your mother. So we've got sons, daughters, male, female, father, mother. Commandment number seven says, don't commit adultery, which has to do with being faithful to one's spouse. And the, ten the tenth commandment says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, and you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. So there's wives are mentioned. And then it says, nor your neighbor's male servant, nor his female servant. So again, we've got males, females, fathers, mothers, children, sons, daughters. My point is that the Ten Commandments that say don't murder, don't kill, are also extremely gender specific. They don't go back and forth. They don't just uh, change according to the whims of, of what we think uh, today, or maybe we'll change our mind tomorrow. Uh, 
Uh, everything is very clear in the Bible when it comes to God's law, when it comes to what is right and what is, what is wrong. Now here's another big issue that's described in Scripture, and that is the issue of the cross of Jesus Christ. Christians believe in the cross. We believe in, uh, in Jesus, that Jesus gave his life 2,000 years ago to pay the price, to pay the price for our sins. But a big question is, what is sin? How do we know what's sin? How do we know what's right, what's wrong? How do we know why Jesus died? Well, we know from the, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments tell us uh, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, that God is a jealous God and he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. The word iniquity is the word for sin. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, in the New Testament, the Bible says sin is breaking the law. In the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 20, uh, Paul wrote that by the law is the knowledge of sin. So God has a law. He talks about murder. He talks about hatred. He talks about genders. He talks about men, women, males, females. Uh, and, and everything is not up for grabs. It's not all just a matter of interpretation or opinion or feeling or, uh, you know, who we choose we want to be today versus tomorrow. Uh, this is not the way the God of heaven describes the human issue of who we really are in his sight. And the Bible tells us that it, it's because humans have sinned, because humans have strayed away from God's plan. His original plan is described in the Bible. Humans have uh, drifted away from God's law. Humans have become very, very confused. And there's never been a time, I don't think, when we've, when we've been more confused than today. Uh, we're just, we're, we're all mixed up. We don't know our right hand from our left hand. We don't know what's right. We don't know what's wrong. And we are living in the midst of a terrible, uh, confusing generation and controversy uh, that is, uh, full of hatred and, uh, and, and evil and, and murder and a whole lot of other things. And this just goes on and on and on and on and on. The Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3, it says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. The whole reason why Jesus gave his life on the cross 2,000 years ago is because humanity has strayed from the clear, simple, pure, truth of God and his will and his original plan for human beings. And that plan, that will, that standard of right or wrong uh, and wrong is revealed in the Bible, God's word. And if there was ever a time when we, we need to get back to the book, it's today. Time is running out for this world. And I was uh, also moved by the headline of the New York Times dealing with what just happened in Orlando. And here's the headline. And it says, the last call at the Pulse nightclub, and then the shots rang out. Uh, evidently, it was the bartender who made one last call for drinks. And that was when Omar Mateen started shooting. Last call. One of these days, there is going to be a last call to human beings on whose, about whose side they're on back to the Ten Commandments, back to the Second Commandment, talking about sin and fathers and children. It says that God will, will visit the iniquity or the sins of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, he says, and showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Uh, I, I certainly don't believe in hate crimes, but according to, according to God's perspective, Humans can commit a hate crime against him by choosing that we don't want to follow his law. We don't want to follow his, his will. We don't want to do what he knows to be best for us. He's the one who set things up at the beginning. He knows what's right. He knows what's best. He loves us and he wants our happiness. And yet in the midst of this, uh, God says that there are people that hate him and there are people that love him. And how do we know whether we hate God or whether we love him? He tells us. He says he, that God shows mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my 
commandments. According to the Bible, the way we show our love for God is by our willingness to do what's right, to follow his commandments. And the only way we can do that, first of all, is being forgiven for all of our sins through the grace of Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, uh, his love is extended to all. His love is extended to you, it's to me, uh, to all the presidential candidates, to all the news reporters that are covering what happened, uh, to those in the LGBTQ and whatever else community. Uh, God loves us all and he's extending his offer to you and to me to turn from our sins and to come back to him, uh, back to the great creator of heaven and earth who set things up originally in the beginning and who knows what's best for you and for me. I'd like to close with a verse in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 6 and 7. And This is God's word to you and to me. The Bible says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. We are living in the time of God's last call. In the midst of all the confusion, and the, uh, the chaos, and the anger, and the hatred, and the murders, and the controversies that are going on on all sides of us, God is calling a people to return to the Lord, to come back to him, to get ready for the return of Jesus Christ. And may God help you and may he help me to be among that group who are prepared for the big day, the day of God when he finally comes to set everything right and then to bring this world back to the way it was in the beginning where there was only love and there will be someday soon only love again forever.